How to handle blocked work items. The work item is being blocked due to external dependency. In this scenario, your development team started working on a work item, and in the middle of their work, they found out they have an external dependency. This means the development team is blocked for that specific user story. The dependency could be anything from requiring an external team to do some additional work, your team awaiting on external review, some type of approval, or just getting a simple question answered by someone from outside your team. In this scenario, you want to flag the work item on your JIRA board as blocked. I recommend you use the flag functionality in JIRA by right-clicking on the user story and selecting Add Flag. In comments, you should add all the details of the issue and tag the people needed for helping with the issue. When people are tagged in JIRA comments, they get notified of the message usually by email and in the notification section of JIRA as well. Flagging work items in JIRA using this method turns the card yellow, which makes it easier to identify the blockers on your board. Keep in mind blocked items still count towards the WIP limit. As long as the work item is still a priority, the card should stay in the same column until it gets unblocked. Everyone should work towards removing the block with the delivery lead leading the effort. Once the work item is unblocked, the JIRA flag is removed and the card continues through the regular Kanban workflow. In the case the blocker cannot be removed for a long time, the team can discuss other options and potentially agree to move the block card back in the backlog until a solution is found. Moving the card back in the backlog should be an exception. An example of this type of blocker could be due to the need of having another team doing development work, which might not be available for support at that time. If you run in this scenario, make sure you continue to enter comments under the blocked card in the backlog. You should still have the flag on, so the work items stay yellow even in the backlog. As the delivery lead, you should continue to work with the other team on solving the dependency. Only when the dependency is resolved, the card will come back in the active Kanban board of the team. This is the most common and recommended way to handle blockers. I do want to take a minute and call out another way which I've seen teams approach blockers that is not a great practice. Some teams create a column on their Kanban board specifically for blocked items. They usually don't assign whip limits to this new column. As teams run into blockers, they move the card from the in-progress column to the blocked column. The issue is that blocked columns artificially allow you to raise your whip limits and which defeats the entire point of having whip limits. A blocked column is an anti-pattern in Kanban. It breaks the entire point of managing flow and removing the impediments that are halting the workflow. Traditional management might like this approach because it maximizes utilization and capacity. However, it does not provide flow of value to customers. This method just games the workflow to keep busy without solving problems. In this section, we will look at the main Kanban flow problems and challenges. In this scenario, testing is blocked because prior step has no items done. In this case, the quality assurance engineers have finished their user stories and no other work items are done from the development side. As you can see, the dev done columns are empty and the developers are all working on in-progress items. In this scenario, testers might find themselves without any user stories anywhere from a couple hours to even a day or two. In this case, the testers should first reach out to the developers and see if they can assist with anything on the implementation side. If the testers are not able to help on the development side, they should stay productive by improving their test coverage by writing automated tests or improving their test cases, expanding documentation or improving their tooling. They should always be working on improvements that will make them more efficient and improve the quality of testing in the future. Another challenge could be, development is starting to get blocked due to testing. In this scenario, development is at its whip limit and testers still have items in progress. At this point, developers should reach out to testers and see if they can assist them with their testing instead of picking up additional user stories from the ready column. All developers should be able to test as well, as long as they are not testing their own work. Developers might not be excited to perform testing instead of development. However, keep in mind the goal is for the work items to flow smoothly through the Kanban and to minimize lots of in-progress work. This scenario should be an exception. If you find yourself in this scenario a lot, you should discuss with your team and identify the main source of your bottleneck. If needed, you can adjust the WIP limits, but make sure you understand the real source of your issue first. Another common challenge is could be constantly getting blocked. If your team or work items seem to find themselves blocked a lot, you should have a discussion with your team and identify the main sources of the problem. For example, 
If your flow through each step is uneven or takes a long time, it could be that your work items are too big and need to be broken down into smaller user stories. This should be done during a refinement session with your team and before the cards get into your ready column. If a step goes from having lots of work to no work at all, try to increase the whip limit for that step by one, so that you create a buffer to handle the variation. If a step is slow in the Kanban workflow and the steps before and after are constantly being blocked, here are some things you can do. First, you would probably do a quick root cause analysis with the team and see what are some things you can do to make things faster. You could, for example, reallocate some people to the slow step or improve your tools or systems. You can adjust and lower the whip limit for the other steps so that you can assign more people to the slow step. Another question teams run into pretty frequent is how to handle miscellaneous work. These work items could be different for each team and company. They could be things like, the team working on an important review or executive session that might require a demo or a conference approaching which requires putting together a presentation. When encountering any miscellaneous work items, it's important to capture them as user stories in JIRA, just like all other requests. If multiple people need to work on it, you can create subtasks under that user story and assign them to different people in the team. Once the request has been defined and documented, insert the request in your active Kanban board and move it through your regular workflow just like all other items. Be flexible with this kind of work, and if needed, even create and define separate done rules for this type of work. Another Kanban challenge is in the scenario of some team members missing stand-up. If this happens from time to time, you should set expectations that people missing stand-up should still communicate any updates or challenges. In a remote environment, this can be done by some form of instant messaging or email. Even though they miss stand-up, they should still update their cards on the Kanban board. In the case this scenario happens consistently with a specific person, you should chat one-on-one -on -one with this person and better understand why they are missing stand-up. They might have a good reason. Try to work with them on a solution. In the case they don't have a good reason and they are skipping stand-up because they just don't think they need to show up, you might want to chat about this issue with management, especially if stand-up is a common and expected practice in your team. Another challenge could be new work coming in and plan keeps changing. What I mean by this is work that your team is already working on and work that has been already defined and prioritized in your ready column is no longer relevant due to some big change in your organization. This scenario happens from time to time. There could be many good reasons for the changes in priority or direction. Usually this comes from executives or higher management. The teams that are using the Kanban method are in the best position to quickly change direction with minimum impact. Kanban excels in this area. In this scenario, if any user stories are in progress already by your development team, you might want to let them finish those. You can double check on this with your management as well. It's usually a good idea to let them finish those in progress user story, and while they do that, the rest of the team can focus on defining and documenting the new requests. The original work items in the ready column should probably be reviewed with stakeholders and product lead to see if any of them should be kept or just moving them all back in the backlog. Another common Kanban scenario is when new work item needs to be worked on by team members that are already busy. This scenario could happen when a team member has a specific technical skill that's needed for a type of work. When this work comes in and that preferred team member is busy, what we could do is Assign the new particular work item to a different person and have the preferred team member review and provide assistance when needed. This might take longer for the work item to be complete. However, we are expanding the knowledge across the team, which will help with future bottlenecks. The other option is assigning the current work of the preferred team member to someone else so they can pick up the new work item. Another Kanban challenge and question is, what happens when a new person joins the team? Let's say a developer. Usually this person needs to be onboarded for some time. The onboarding process and approach could be different for each company. One approach could be this new person might work together with another developer for some time until they learn more about the team. Another approach is the new developer starts picking up a user story right away and starts working on it, even if it takes longer for the work to be completed. From the Kanban perspective, in this scenario, we would most likely want to increase the whip limit by one. Once the developer can handle more work, the whip limit might even increase by two. This is different for each team, but don't forget to adjust your whip limits as your team changes. A common challenge for tech teams is not having enough time for technical debt. These could be things like system or tools improvements, 
maintenance of current systems, transition from one tool to another, or even some type of automation that is needed. What I've seen is that most tech teams are trying to approach this work with the idea that they will get to it when they have more time. In reality, that time never comes due to higher business priorities. The best way to handle this work is to document it in user stories and have it ready part of your backlog, just like all other work. Next, you want to have a team discussion and come to an agreement on allocation of a specific capacity for this type of work per month. Make sure you include management in that conversation as well, so the commitment is agreed by everyone. Next, you will have this work go through the same regular Kanban workflow, just like all your other work. You can use one of your classes of services, like the Intangible class, to track this type of work and make sure the capacity the team agreed on per month is respected. The last Kanban challenges we will cover in this section is when teams get too excited and focus more on process than delivery results. At the end of the day, all the process and Kanban method outlined in this class is to deliver results and complete quality work in the shortest time possible. The Kanban method is one of the leanest and lightest approaches compared with a lot of other delivery approaches out there. You want to make sure the process doesn't grow artificially and start slowing the team down on delivering results. When you start as a new team, usually you want to be more strict on all the Kanban rules and approaches we discussed so far in this class. However, after the team matures and understands the concept, feel free to be more flexible. This could include WIP limits, the classes of services used, or any policies created by the team. You want to establish a trust with your team. With that said, you don't want to compromise the quality of the work delivered. A good practice is to review all your processes and rules from time to time and ask yourself which of those things are still needed. Most teams add processes and rules, but don't remove any of them, which might result in slowing delivery. And with that, we end this section. Next, we will chat about the exciting topic of metrics.